Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair. And this time I will um, I will take the uh, Canon FD 50mm 1.8 uh, and it's the new version. And I will, um, as one of you out there, ask me uh, what if I uh, could, well, just take it apart and uh, put it back together again. Well, um, it will not be a video about re-grease uh, the helicoid. It will only be, uh, I mean, um, what you, uh, when you will, I, I mean, when you want to, to re-grease the helicoids in here. I mean, this lens is quite good, so it's not a problem. But if you want to disassemble your lens, uh, the new version, and uh, regrease it, clean the, I mean, clean the helicoids and regrease it with something re, I mean, grease. Well, uh, and you miss some of the point when you take it apart. So you are missing maybe all of those um, measurement um, like I do or probably where the helicoids came off the thread yeah sometimes it can be a, be a really pain uh, to get that uh, those parts together at the right setting that it was before you took it apart so in this video I will explain how it's how I did it it could be different in your lens <clears throat> and uh, yeah let's jump into it let's just see this lens I mean I already made a video about the aperture system but uh, let's just put it on my camera and set okay it sets on a and I can just fire the camera and the aperture is actually working um, since it's, uh, you can see, more light come in, it will stop down. Or the uh, the depth of field, of course, I have to set it something like 22. You can see it actually works. So, um, but the focus, yeah. So many people have problem with that. So they just take apart their lens and have a problem where they have to put it back in again before they, I mean, because they have no measurement of how long the distance is, I mean, inside the helicoid system. And maybe not have any marks if, uh, when you went at infinity or when the helicoid has be unscrewed and where it came off the thread. So that's all very important. Now, we need some tools, not very much, some regular dentist tool, a pencil for, I mean, pen for scribing, and a JIS 2.5 millimeter. Yes, it's a Japanese lens, so you use the JIS, not Philips screwdriver. Well, they look like, but are not the same. A lens sucker, small one, from Japan Hobby Tool. No, I'm not sponsored by any company, so yeah, so it is. And a piece of, uh, I mean, a proper tool and a, 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 an old gasket from the plumber section in the hardware store. Also a clipper to measure the distance. So now let's jump into it. We begin with the nameplate, which is not screwed on. Uh, it could be, but in this case it's clipped on. So I use a piece of paper and um, simply have it in place and with a spade uh, kind of uh, flat tool uh, the piece of paper because I will not scratch my front lens and dig under it and then gently lift it up so you can unclick it so that's it here we go not any more use of that see down under here there are three screws and just so we have a kind of a reference, <clears throat> it's good to have the index mark. That is my, uh, in most cases, the reference. So before taking apart anything, I simply make a scratch up here, uh, even on the 
plastic, uh, which is the mount for the front lens group. It's in plastic. Uh, we can easily make a scratch here and no one will see it. Also on the, it has a cut out some here, but we can also make a scratch up here. They, those scratch, I mean, we will go deeper into it and even make more scratch. No one will ever see it. Well, if they take it apart, of course, but, and um, so I take out the front lens group. So, um, which is quite easy. It's not really, it, I mean, it's not a, it's a quite easy lens to work with. If we compare to many other lenses, that can be quite difficult. Those uh, information you you can provide as much as you want. Um, it's absolutely useful. So those, my focus is set to infinity, and uh, it should be as much as possible during the reassemb uh, the disassembly. Now we come into the to the actual inside of the focusing ring, and it's uh, also made of plastic. So we will again make a scratch here in line with the with the index mark here, so you know its exact position. Also here, on one of the gap here, you can make a scratch down here, and also on the plastic, so you know the exact position of this plastic focusing ring when you assemble it. <clears throat> because the focusing ring will also act as a stop, because inside here, there is a, uh, it will, the, I mean, when you turn the focusing ring, it will stop at some point here, something in line with the index mark. So it's, uh, why it, it is so useful uh, to set small marks. I mean, many people do it, many does not. So they have problems after. So out with the three screws. And, uh, important thing, when you pull out the focusing ring, I still have one screw here, when you pull out the focusing uh, ring, you just pull it straight out. Because then, in that way, you will not turn anything. Uh, because when I take away the focusing ring, the stop in here will, of course, disappear because it's inside the focusing ring. So don't be very aware of of uh, when you take it apart. Just pull it straight out. Now, inside here, before turning anything, it is is important. Uh, this uh, pen here, which is quite useful with a scriber, is uh, called a flexi file, which you can find on the internet. I will put links in the description below. So when we're in here, uh, we need to make a scratch, something like here, with the stop post here, all the way out. Um, so it's it's uh, clear where the the infinity is. Um, just to get rid of stuff, we'll just take out the front lens group. I will. I should have done it earlier. But with the lens tool, we can just take it out and put it on some a gasket like this. So it's nice and steady. So now I um, I will continue with the, taking off the 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 yeah the actual mount here. And um, it sits with three screws here and here and here. Now the mount can only sit in one position because of the screw but the inner here well it can be a little tricky to put on that's why I made another video about how to 
mount the mount correct. So, um, and it doesn't really matter how it sits. A good thing is, before you take it apart, set a mark here on the, this, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's called, maybe the bayonet ring, in line with the mark. In, the, in that way you have an, uh, a good idea of when you put things in, well, it, uh, so you have your reference. Yeah, so all for that. Things will will maybe turn and so on, but we will we will make it no problem. It will be all safe and and good. So there. Have a good grip on it. Maybe things will flow away. I don't know. And that way we can actually take out the the uh, bayonet here, and you can see it already begins to or to move over here. Now, this is not something special. I mean, and then we can take it out. You can set it to click uh, where it is here, and also set a mark here some way in line with the the release button so you have an idea of where things should sit and then i can just pull it out i will tell you everything about when i p we put things back in again now uh, this is how it looks inside and i will also when we're in here take out the aperture assembly just so we have that clear before taking it out, well, I already made a video about that, how to clean the the aperture plates. But if you look here, it sits with three screws, and they can only sit where they should. But the holes are bigger, because in that way you can adjust the the uh, aperture assembly, so it it you can fine tune it. But it's good thing is to make a scratch in here it's all plastic in here and uh, so it's quite easy so the two marks should sit in line um, before you take it apart in that way it's just easy to unscrew the whole I mean the three screws here they're longer than the any other any other of the screws Okay, where's my tweezer here? And um, the aperture assembly will not fall apart because it's also sit with three screws that sit there. No, yeah, there and there. <laughs> Some are sitting with two screws. So now the aperture assembly will be free and I can just pop it in my hand or use a rubber tool, put it on here, turn it over and let it fall into place. Because if we look back here, um, the aperture plates will move when I turn this, uh, the, this ring here. And uh, well, I can just let it fall into my hand. The pin also comes out. So just let it go. And it's out. No problem here. Put it somewhere a safe place. You can see here um, how it's, it looks. And this, this gap here is where the this pin goes and on the other hand it's actually that part here that moves against this uh, this uh, ring so just put it away and now we are actually much closer than we was still have my index mark here 
because what I want to do is I want to measure the bare uh, uh, focusing assembly not with all the other stuff because it can maybe it's not precise enough as I know now we take out the, um, the I mean I'm missing one screw here but it doesn't matter the work the lens works fine anyway but there are three screws around here, one there, there, and there. This is smaller than the other one, and it sits in the plastic. The other one is screwed, yeah, I think it's screwed into the plastic body. In, no, I think, well, doesn't really matter. I'm missing it. But before taking anything apart here with the, mo the moving parts, we need to set some marks which is very useful with the assembly a sample of course see this pin will sit there and it should sit there as I mentioned in the other video so make a mark here and also on the pin here down here the ring uh, this ring here there's also I mean it has to sit in line with this little pin here for the release button. Set a mark down here and just to be sure everything is in line you can also set the mark over here in line with this screw here. And the aperture should sit at something like 22 see and this uh, part here should sit in the in this, uh, well, you cut out or a notch or something in here. So in that way, you will have the correct position. I mean, there is also a good thing to set a mark down here, where the the little part that goes to the uh, aperture assembly. So this has to sit in line. This has to sit in line here, also a little mark. In that way, in my opinion, uh, you have everything where it should sit when you put the mount on. Now, let's continue. The, the screws here come out. You see the bigger. Out with that and this one here and the last one so now I can actually take this ring off and there is also a little hook here see this and of course it will sit up here where it sits there and uh, we can get rid of that just to have it here it's good to arrange your parts in um, in some small groups well that's just the way I work now um, before we continue we uh, have to uh, remember what position all those parts sit in see the focusing ring has to be turned all the way over to here but this part has also to follow because if we look here down here this gap here has to be in line with this little pin here so when I turn the the uh, this ring I don't know the name of it turn it all the way over to here then I can just take it out. In that way I also set a mark here, uh, this part here, and set a little mark here. And uh, in that way I can actually just take out this ring. Ah, not easy. See 
then it comes out nothing special and then I can take off my aperture ring but remember just uh, we have to be very sure because when I turn it over you will see the click function uh, for the aperture is all that plastic bar here sit with two screws there and there and there is also a little steel not ball but a roller and uh, it's also a spring loaded which you can see here so no problem with that just uh, give it some grease and it will just sit where it should now that was all those parts to come into the focusing assembly and we go back to our index mark here my mark which I set in the beginning and those all those three marks have to be in line and then that that way I can take my notes which is really useful for me and measure how is it I mean it's always good to have uh, when it's when things are in in, uh, in line and sit correct measure at infinity so uh, in that way I can just go down here which I think is better to measure I measure to that area here this area here not out here and not in here but this you, uh, maybe you better can see in that way see not not the not this area here but this area here and of course from the front for the inner ring so I measure it and it should be something like something like this I mean maybe this one was turned a little much too much could be so it doesn't really matter I mean it um, it's just so you have an idea of are you on the correct uh, position but here it is something like that and uh, then we can also measure from the the where the focusing ring sits from this part here to the same position here and that should be something like 13.04 or so could be different in your lens but I would think it'd be something like that or so so now I'm actually ready to take out the helicoid key which prevent if uh, if it's not if I take that out I can fully turn the inner and the middle uh, helicoid so and this one can only sit in one position it there is a kind of a pin in here in the middle like in here and uh, I mean the holes are a little longer but anyway we'll make a mark where is my tool see we can make a mark here um, where's my focus here just set it somewhere and make another scratch on the on the edge of the inner uh, part here so the two marks are in line that's it and since we have two marks here we have the my mark here at the, the inner helicoid and I have my mark on the middle helicoid in reference to the to the index mark so um, you see I can turn it without any problem it cannot it cannot go any further so there it is now I take off uh, out the helicoid key and in that way out with that
and so Oi. <laughs> magnetic screwdriver is a good thing but sometimes it can be a little hmm, annoying now then I can take out the the helicoid key and gently lift it out oh, where's my tree sir no it doesn't matter and just lift it out here in a way and get it free so and there's only one so now the helicoid is out helicoid key <laughs> now is out so put it somewhere now next thing of the of the uh, notes you see the uh, helicoids has to be turned uh, one way or the other and uh, before it get off the thread and here the inner helicoid will come off after almost one turn at around 20 I mean 1052 so we if we have a watch here uh, which is 12 up here we'll go down here to at round at around um, something like here in my lens so it would be something like 1052 or so not 10 but or and not 11 uh, but as you can see I write it down here um, where things almost should come off so I hold on to the the uh, the outer helicoid and the middle helicoid and in that way I can turn the the inner helicoid and I have my mark so I will just turn it and almost a turn so it goes fine that way and it's it will come off at around here so there it should be wow and then it's off and it's easy because I know exact position so I can just put it back in again it can be a little tricky to put on so you just have it sit uh, probably aligned and it should say click in a way but it's plastic is so it does not click so much and then you can turn it back into correct position so we can just turn it off I mean <laughs> turn it out we unscrewed yeah you know what I mean and since uh, the inner I mean the middle helicoid is uh, also to be taken out but it has to be turned something like six and a quarter turn and it will come off at around 10 o'clock so it will be something like yeah over here not really 10 but but uh, around there might maybe 9 935 or so um, but it has to be it's a much finer thread like the middle helico is really across uh, threads so at the same time but it has to be turned the other way I mean not the other way in this one okay um, so I, my mark is here turn it one and two three four five six and I know it will come off here so turning 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 and then it's off 
And if you do not have those marks, you can put it whatever in, but you will not find the right position of it. So that's, this is why it is so important. So I can just put it in again and be aware of there is not too much dirt in here. And you have to fiddle a little with the around the mark, the off mark. So it has to have the correct position. Not doing too much force on it because you can damage the thread. So this was the one, two, three, four, five, six, so there. Then it should be there. I do not have to measure anything because my, I have measured the turns and I measure the distance and on my off mark. So everything should, I mean, it can only be in line. So I can just put the middle, I mean the, the inner helicoid in. And uh, I also have my mark here. Find the correct position, click, and then it comes on again. And it will end it up the exact same place. So let's see how it, it, it looks when I measure again. Should be something, something like that. And here we are again. Where is it? Here. 13.03.04. And that's what I actually measure it. To be as you can see here so that's fine and what about the inner so when the marks are in line here I can also measure it here and uh, it should be something like depends but at least something like that so it's not bad so uh, I can put in the helicoid key again and uh, simply assemble the whole lens again. You see, uh, oh yeah, there's something here. This uh, hole here is actually where the back of this helicoid key will go into. And this uh, pin here kind of will simply go into the the hole here and in that way the um, helicoid key will only sit there and again it could be different in your lens so simply press down here and wiggle a little with the the focusing especially the middle I mean the yeah the inner <laughs> and simply press it down and it sits where it should now we begin the assemble of the whole lens so there and I do not need my, my notes uh, for this the assemble process because everything is lined up I have marks everywhere so I know the exact position so I put in the the aperture assembly put it on my little lens tool here and uh, I have to be aware of the little plastic where it is here because when I put in the the uh, aperture assembly here this ring has to sit over here because 
I have my mark here and that little plastic thing here don't know the name of it has to sit in that position here so uh, and the pin here yeah the pin here has to go all the way against this part here and that way it will uh, it should come into place but let's see how to go have to figure it out and then it will come in here maybe you have to wiggle a little so it is and we can just test if it works yeah you can see and I can move this part here and the aperture will open and close so in that way I can um, put in my three screws for the that hold the aperture assembly in place and I also have my mark down here so everything can only sit in one position of course the screw holes here they can only sit in one position but as you can see here the screw holes are not only round they are just say oval so that that's why you can make a little adjustment of that so don't screw them in yet because we um, just put in the screws and then I can line up the aperture assembly so it sits correct now where's that here so maybe I should just do this So, so now we are just, it's the easy part going <laughs> back to where it, it is uh, fully assembled again. And uh, yeah, then I can take, uh, I mean, I can put on the focusing ring. I mean, I mentioned the, the stop here on the back of the focusing ring it will be this part here hopefully you can see it it will go it will go against this part here with the index mark so that's why it is important to to make those marks so um, and to make it easier you can just uh, put it to more to near end and in that way put on your focusing ring you have your little mark over here and your mark over here in the focusing ring and in that way I can put it on and turn the the uh, focusing and pin pressing down a little and turn the whole uh, focusing ring and in that way go into stop so the infinity is where it is if the infinity and we can also take that with if your lens is not fully aligned at infinity you can simply uh, loosen the three screws here and turn the focus i mean the middle helicoid in some way because it's only a little movement but you can fine tune your focus I mean your infinity in that way it's not much but enough and then we can put it on and uh, in that way put in our three screws here so just uh, screw them in lightly and then you can begin to when you have aligned everything And I mean, 
see the the three screws where they sit they I mean you can see some marks uh, from the head the screw head in the plastic so you know exact where they should sit so here and the last one goes here so we just have to align it with the mark I set down here oh, it's difficult to see you see hmm. there it is and it should be something like that then gently tighten the screws and here we are again so now then uh, the more tricky part come <laughs> uh, because um, we need to put on the all the other parts which will say the aperture ring it can only sit in one position because we have the little click steel ball here and the plastic bar over here so give it some grease to hold it in place and we also have this uh, lock that unlock the A and uh, in that way we can put it on where is it yeah here you see there are cuts out cutouts three cuts out here there and over here they are there are some uh, parts here there and there and the the aperture ring can only sit in one position when you put it on so when um, when you put it in you have to press a little down on the on the button here to move the this uh, hook kind of so the aperture ring will sit on so I have a finger over here with the click then you can put it on and then it should sit where it should then we can put in the inner ring and uh, it should be where's the ring here we just need to turn it a little so there and then I can put this ring on there's a little cut out here this gap here it has to go over the little uh, part here that stick out a little so in that way you can put it on and hopefully we'll, we can make it just move it so and then I can turn this ring a little maybe it's not fully aligned yeah it should be and uh, I can turn this so it sits there and now I will put on the the I don't know what the name call but uh, it will sit over here the little hook has to sit over here so in that position here you see this ring can also sit in one position the two holes here there's one hole here and here so it's simply <laughs> not possible to put in um, in a different I mean in, in a wrong way and uh, not everything is proper aligned I think so no it's not correct yeah it is correct 
Then put in the the different screws here. Sometimes it's not easy. Put gloves on. So there. And the other screw sits over here. And the last one in my lens. <laughs> of course if I had the the last screw I will put it in here. So everything should be lined up as I see it. Should be possible to turn the aperture ring. Yeah that's fine. Now set it to 22. Aperture 22. Because uh, it will make it easier to put in the mount and the ring here. And that I also mentioned in the other video. The fork, kind of the U-shape uh, thing here, has to go over this pin here. And um, it, if it sits too much over there or too much over here, it, you will not be able to put on the the mount here and that's why I set a mark down here with the uh, with the connection to the aperture assembly <clears throat> so now I can put it on without any problem uh, just need to press this all the way over to here and then that way put the mount on. <clears throat> you see the this little stick out here this little stick out here has to go um, where the cut out is here. So if we say so it will be something like that. So I um, will catch the the fork here, the U-shape, and put it down over. See, it says to, it, it's easiest, most easy when the uh, uh, focusing ring is at infinity. Then I could can put the U-shape over here and have it there. Hopefully you can see in here what's going on. No, it's difficult. But I have to put this all the way over here and put it on. Then wiggle a little. So this pin here kind of is in line with the, almost in line with the um, release button. In that way, it will not flew away and then I can put on the the uh, bayonet, I think it's called. And the little pin here has to go in line with the red dot. Not the dot, but the pin, the stick out here. And the other way I can simply lower it and get my screws. Screw it in again. So here, find the screw holes, mm, turn it a little, oh sometimes it's really difficult with the slippery gloves here, oh it was a little too far. That position here. So you can see it's uh, it's not that hard on this lens. So there, the last screw. 
So let's see if it will work. I can just put it on my camera again. Not necessary to put on the front lens, but let's see how it will go. Of course, I cannot put it on because the two uh, red thing here has to sit in line. So uh, I need to release it. Press in the button, turn it all the way up to here. That way, put it on. Click. Let's say it stays on something like A. Fire it. And you can actually see it works depending on how much light comes in or the way I turn it. So, release it again. And in that way, I will put on the front lens group. So there. And because I have a mark here on the front, I know exact position. So then I do not need to collimate my lens because it, it, it sits where it should, no matter what. And then I can put on the front. So there. And with the nameplate on, we are back on track. So uh, this screw here. So here we are. And we can put on the name plate again. And it's just to clip on. So it is. Now this uh, len lens, oh, <laughs> from back, was here. And then it's back to work again. So um, that was all. Hope you can use the info for in about this particular lens. And uh, yeah, see you out there. There will be more videos when I have the time. Bye bye.